9,204. Half of the people in this room lost $9,204 from their paychecks last year. You didn't take an extra, an extra long vacation. You didn't lose an account at work. But you did do one thing that was entirely out of your control. You were born female. According to the American Association of University Women, in 2017, women made 20 cents less on the dollar than men. The most common explanation for the wage gap is that women just choose careers that pay less. So let's talk about this a little bit. Last year, the highest paying jobs fell into one of four categories, science, technology, engineering, or math, STEM for short. Data shows that fewer women choose STEM fields. There's a variety of reasons for this, and we'll talk about that a little bit further. But let's look at what STEM actually means. STEM is all around us, and a lot of us don't really notice how involved STEM is in our life. Tech, in particular, is in our pocket with us all the time. Some of you are taking photos right now, um, and you're using your phones, and that's, those are made by computer programmers. Computer programmers are in every single industry in the world. Still, while half of the US population is female, only 21% of computer programmers are women. And I think that's a problem. This means that the people creating our world are not representative of our world. This means that women are not invited to the table in the creation of our world. And our opinions are not heard. I just don't think that's cool. So my name is Akriti, and a few years ago, I was asked to learn to code as I graduated from college. Raise your hand if you help your parents with their phones and their technology. Continue raising your hand if you have ever considered a career in technology. A couple hands went down. I asked myself these same questions when I was asked to learn to code. Was I good at tech? Yeah, my parents always need help, and I'm always there. Um, but a career in tech, just because I'm good at tech, doesn't mean I would be good at a career in tech. There's a lot of reasons why people don't think they, that careers in tech are for them. For me personally, it seemed really scary. Scary in a very different way from other experiences that I've had. I didn't think I would be good at technology. I didn't think it would be fun. Um, I was too much fun to be a computer programmer. I didn't want to sit behind a computer all day, right? Um, and I just didn't think I would enjoy it and like, be good at it. I didn't think it was for me. Um, I've noticed by being in tech for so many years that this is something very common with girls at a young age. We start to see that women, uh, female interest in STEM, especially tech, starts to fall off around middle school. There's a lot of reasons for this, but the main one is that we have to teach girls in our communities that these areas are made for them. So I tried to bridge this gap a little bit, and I co-founded a nonprofit called Girls Code Lincoln. Over the weekends, every Sunday, we teach girls in our community how to code. And this sounds really boring to a lot of you, but our girls actually really enjoy it. And through this experience, I've learned a lot of things. But mostly, I've learned that there's a three-step process to helping girls learn that these areas are for them. Step one, we need to raise the awareness about these areas. Step two, we need to increase their confidence. And step three, we need to talk about motivation in a very different way than we usually do. These three steps are what I would like to share with you today. And I hope that you will make a difference in your community and encourage more girls into STEM, especially tech. So let's dive a little bit deeper. Step one, raising awareness. In 2008, 30% of STEM degrees were awarded to women. In 2015, we improved by 1%. We had a better economy, more emphasis on STEM education for women, but that's not a really good improvement. So why does this happen? Well, one of the main reasons that women don't go into STEM fields, especially tech, is because of the lack of female mentors in these fields. One of the dads in our club put this best. He said, I know I'll never understand how important it is to see people who look like me doing things. However, I can tell that seeing other girls her age enjoying this club is, and having women act as mentors has meant the world to my daughter. He signed this grateful father. You can't be what you can't see. 
And representation in tech is really tricky. It's really important for all of us to be able to see people in the positions that we want. And when there's so few women in tech, this is really hard for young girls to grasp. Representation in this field is really tricky, though. Um, sometimes when it's there, we don't really see it. I think a great example of that are three women in history, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, and Dorothy Vaughn. I bet a lot of you don't know who these three women are. They worked really hard in 1962 um, in math and engineering. But you've all heard of them. They're the three title characters of Hidden Figures, a movie that came out many years later in 2016. Representation matters a lot, but so does image. And so I took to our, everyone's favorite search engine, Yahoo, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I Googled it. <laughs> so here's the image result from Computer Programmer. And while the general lack of women on this screen might not be a concern to a lot of you, it can be concerning to a young girl not seeing herself represented. OK, so we know this is a problem. What do we do? I think that it's really important for all of us to teach the young girls in our communities that these areas are for them. We have to do that by encouraging them to try, the, try exploring these areas. We have to show them the people in history that are in these areas. Be their superhero. Be their mentor. As a woman in tech, I can pinpoint the exact person that encouraged me to choose this path. Be that person for a little girl around you. And if you can't be, find that person for them. Step two, increasing confidence. So once we've told girls that, they are, that these areas are for them and told them that these areas exist, we need to make sure that they are encouraged to work in these areas. Um, when we think of programmers, we often think of this. We think of somebody who knows exactly what they're doing. But I bet if you asked any programmer around you, they can tell you of numerous instances when it's been more like this. This happens to me every day. Sometimes I spend hours on one section of code. You see, coding is really hard. And a lot of the stuff we're doing when we code is completely new. It's never been done before. So we, there's a lot of trial and error. Resilience is key. So we need to teach the girls around us to practice their resilience and to never give up. And I think, that's, I think that tech is a great way to teach them that lesson. So when I was first learning to code, I didn't really know how difficult it was. I didn't really know how to go through this problem-solving process. So the first task I was given was to play a game um, called Elevator Saga, and I would code elevators. Spoiler alert, it's weirdly complicated. Um, you have multiple elevators. You have to decide which elevator is going to go to which floor. You have multiple floors and lots and lots of passengers, and you have to make sure the elevators aren't going to the same floors. The problem-solving process was difficult, but it was really fun, and that's why I loved doing it that way. So we tried to introduce fun uh, for our girls in Girls Code Lincoln. We noticed our first semester with web development that our girls loved cats. So all of their websites were cat-themed. Um, they made cat BuzzFeed quizzes. They had a neon cat on their website. Anything you can imagine. The world was their oyster. And so we tried to continue this. Um, our girls have made light-up clothing. They've made boards that display animations, like smiley faces. And they've even made a nerdy version of hide and seek, where their boards communicate with each other to help find each other. So you see, coding can be lots of fun, but we have to make sure we introduce it that way. Girls tend to be creative, and they tend to want to find areas that encourage them to be creative. But we have to give them the confidence that allows them to do that. So encourage the girls around you to do something fun, try something new. And I think that we can really help. Um, that can be a big step towards helping them get along. Step three is um, finding the motivation to work on these things. So it's really important with young girls to motivate them to pursue these areas. And a large part of motivation comes from enjoying the problem-solving process and from knowing that there's social impact in the work that you are doing. If you think around you, um, about the technology around you, there's a lot of tech around you that makes a big difference in our world. It makes your lives easier, it makes your day quicker, and it helps in every area of life, whether medicine, education, no matter what. 
I know that it's easy for us to see social impact when we think of doctors or teachers, because we all have doctors and teachers that impact our lives. But computer programmers do too. So teach your daughters about the social impact that tech can have, and show them that with the combination of these three factors, they can really make a difference in our world. So here's what we know. We know that there's less female representation in tech. We know that this is a problem that starts around middle school. Um, and we know that having girls that are more confident, more aware about the opportunities available to them, and more willing to pursue these opportunities because of their motivation to succeed, we know that those are all skills that are really impactful and powerful in our communities. I think that we can make a huge difference in tech, in STEM, and in our entire world if we encouraged more women, more girls, to pursue these areas. And I think that's a huge step in getting those $9,402 back in our pockets to spend how we want. You see, getting women into tech, it's as easy as one, two, three. Step one, raising awareness. Teach the girls around you about the opportunities available to them and encourage them to take these opportunities instead of shying away from areas where they may be underrepresented. Step two, increasing their confidence. Tell the girls about the things available to them, but then make sure that they are confident and know that they're not the ones that, they're not an outlier when they find these areas difficult. They can, these areas are made for them too. And step three, giving them the motivation to succeed by teaching them about social impact and how impactful their work can be if they do pursue areas of STEM. I think that these three steps will test all of our resilience, but I know that you guys have it in you to do it. But, you know, start teaching, getting girls into STEM, it's as easy as one, two, three, but we really can't start when they're already women. We have to start when they are still in school. Thank you.